Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Formal One Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. I'm your host, Justin Steele, and with me is Danielle Almendra. And tonight, we're going to continue on our VC Andrews Theory videos with who is the who were the worst parents. Uh, we've also filmed uh, who were the worst grandparents, and we're about to film who were the worst siblings. So make sure to catch all three. It is why we're wearing these same clothes. We're just filming them all now, but they'll be released over the next week or two. So we'll get right into it. Uh, primarily, we're focusing from like the Darling Gangers through kind of maybe, you know, definitely through Darling Gangers through Landry, and then maybe a little bit of uh, Melody and uh, Rain in there too. But so. Starting with the Dollingangers, we have Corinne and Christopher. Uh, what do you think about them? Well, obviously, Christopher's fantastic, yeah. so I don't think we even really need to go there. He's definitely not the worst. He was the ideal father. He was you the know, ideal He set father. up the whole gothic, losing the parent that's beloved, yep. to kind of be put in the care of somebody who's not so capable. Um, Corinne picked uh, greed over her own children, locked them up, and poisoned them, yeah. and tried to kill them. And then... Tries to redeem herself later on, and if there be thorns with like Bart and yeah. all that. Ultimately, though, betraying Kathy yet again. Yes, she d it just kept going. Like never was... being able to take accountability. That was always her thing too. We becoming a theme with the the sort of villains of V.C. Andrews right. Land. I mean, these these novels are so gothic, and there's so many like Southern Gothic, and we have these sort of like tropes. And with the twists and the turns with Corinne, yes, she starts off as she's a beloved mother. Greed settles in. It becomes about like she's willing to poison her kids, yeah. but also like try to like put the blame on them and then like not take accountability. Right. So because she can't face her actions, she removes herself more and more. Pedals on the wind. She runs from all the problems as much as she can. And then, and then she like basically ignores Carrie, which that oh I that's think the was, worst. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you remember that. Yeah. yeah, and pedals on the wind. How she was with Carrie was just mm -hmm. heartbreaking. And I love like again it's because it leads to one of my other favorite moments too where. Kathy is in the post office and she's like, I'm not Carrie. I'm not going to just like, yeah. I'll ignore her right back. And it's so <laughs> Kathy. Yeah. But then, and yeah, and if the Brie Thorns, she reaches out to both her, her grandchildren, Corinne, you know, Jory and uh, Bart. Mm -hmm. But obviously Bart's getting all the attention because that was her loves. That was the yeah. child she's supposed to have with Bart. Again, she tries to make up to it for Kathy, her daughter. But again, she tries to save her. Yeah, and just to clarify, we're primarily focusing when we do these uh, episodes, these theories. Who are the worst parents of the main character? Yeah. We could go on and on with all these side characters, etc. So, <laughs> I, you know, if there be thorns, she's she sort of redeems herself a little by saving Kathy, but she, the damage was done. You know, yeah, Corey died. Yeah, and then Carrie. Yeah, and then it's... yeah. Look, we'll, we'll check out our one theory theory video about what yeah. really happened to Corey. It's possible she did one of like a few different things, and all of them we're are horrible. horrifying. All <laughs> right. of them are awful. She is pretty bad. Pretty well, bad. Pretty bad. Go back. Right. I. She's horrible. Now, next up is uh, we're going to talk about the Castile and the parents or pseudo parents of Heaven, and we were discussing this just briefly beforehand. And Heaven had quite a few. We have Sarah and Luke. We have Kitty and Kale. We sort of kind of have Tony and Lee, yeah. which actually are her biological yeah. parents. But Danielle, I'll let you kind of take the lead on this because I know Castile's your favorite. But starting with Luke and Sarah. So Sarah obviously was in over her head with all the children. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. She probably blamed Heaven a lot for Luke not being around. Luke was absolutely awful to Heaven just strictly by ignoring her. I can't really think of a time that he was maybe abusive with her. I'm sure he did he, hit her once, I think. Maybe, I don't know. yeah. It's kind of hard to remember, but just the fact that he ignored her, he was never around, and then basically abandoned his family and left Heaven to be this matriarch of all these children. Luke was the worst. He was he terrible. Was horrible. And I'll then say it was, they starved. Right, they exactly. Steal. Yeah. Well, and with Sarah, too, I remember when I first read Heaven and I the cover, you have Sarah, or I, again, I suppose there's a debate about whether that's Care, uh, Kitty or Sarah with the red hair. It's Sarah, come on. But <laughs> so Sarah. Sarah, the whole time I remember reading it thinking she's going to be this like terrible mother, stepmother, or whatever to, uh, to, to Heaven. But she ends up being pretty decent to Heaven, especially yeah. considering that Heaven is the daughter of this girl, Lee, that she was incredibly jealous of. You know, she could have been a Kitty, and instead she, she genuinely tried to take care of Heaven and make sure she fell yeah. apart of the family. I don't think she ever... She may have at some point towards the end kind of made up... She never really made she... Heaven feel like, I'm not your real mother, but she did, I think, at the point, at the yeah. end, be like your real mother or something, and... 
Um, but never, not, not in spite, not in no. like anger, but Luke, yeah, Luke yeah, was, just was just terrible. And I think he tried at the end to sort of, he was always, he always chose money over heaven or anything because I think it was too overwhelming his grief with Lee, but it doesn't really excuse anything. He sold off his children. Yeah. But at least he didn't really single her out too much later down the road. So, like, at the beginning, he ignored her, and he always right. treated the kids great, yeah. but, like, he did sell all of his children, including mm -hmm. Heaven. Yeah. It wasn't just Heaven. So, and he did leave them all to starve, all of them, including Heaven, so... Yeah. But again, he... it's sort of like, if they starve, or maybe he sells them, he makes some money out of it. It was like a win-win. He makes some money off of it, but his children are going to be taken yeah. care of. With the exception, though, they all kind of had hard lives. I mean, Tom went to go with this farmer that was, like, our taskmaster... And Fanny went with this rapey preacher oh, yeah, the guy, prince, yeah, the you know, and obviously yeah. have you know the the two youngest kids, our Jean and Keith, Keith. Yeah. they at least sort of had a chance. They were the ones who made out the best, yeah, I think. Did. And Heaven obviously went to Kitty and Cal. So Kitty and Cal's parents, obviously, Cal is not an appropriate stepfather, no. and Kitty was this jealous, abusive. Yep. Again, that was my problem. One of my initial problems, besides hair color and settings of the uh, Castile adaptations for Lifetime, that they had these weird moments where they were like, was I a good mother? Kitty asks Heaven, and Heaven's like, you know what, you were. And like just before we saw her beating her, right. before that she's working her like a dog, and I just yeah. never bought it. Where I don't feel like that really happened in the novels. It may have, but I feel like there was a little bit more of a an attempt on Kitty's part. But again... Kitty was the, I, the, was the, awful. the bathtub Cal scene was when right? I read it when yeah. I was younger. The first time I read that scene, I was I was horrified. horrified. Yeah, like just the the burning water, scrubbing her skin, like yeah. just trying to wash the Castile off. Yeah, her, basically. Like but. the in Lifetime's adaptation, almost no pun intended, watered it down. It wasn't yeah. even as like in the novel. It went. It just it was complete. It wasn't. She was pushed in and held and they pulled out. It was she was in there the yeah. whole time. Overall, they're pretty awful too. Yep. And then I mean, obviously. Tony and Lee. Uh, Lee obviously never got the chance to be a mother to heaven, but despite all, you know, for being so young and from Lee's perspective at that age, She's divorce is difficult yeah. to deal with. Her parents were divorced. She's living with this guy that's like doing inappropriate things with her and then takes it beyond that. And yet she never blamed heaven. She was grateful almost, like for this yeah. child that she was going to have and she wanted to love her child, whereas yeah. Tony... He did try for a minute when he first found out, like, oh, wait, this really, this isn't my step-granddaughter, yeah. this is my daughter. But then he goes raping. down the dark roads. As soon as, yeah, as ha like, Heaven has a reaction of, like, okay, you're my father, fine, but I'm not ready for this. Yeah. And, you know, he it made him, like, crazy, like, but I want to be, I want to be. And then he went way too far with yeah. it, and, yeah, so he's pretty the worst, Heaven too. Heaven did he's get... He's the worst, too. Know, they had the Tatterton toys down in... Uh, the Winter Row. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, Heaven, yeah, I mean, bad things happen, but yeah. she, I still think, came out really oh, well yeah, for as sure. far as... And he did try. Again, it was a selfish reason, but, like, buying Luke out. Like, Luke never... Yeah. Knew, Luke never had a chance to kind of make it up to Heaven, which is what she really wanted, because yeah. that was her foundational childhood years. <laughs> because of her real father, Tony, always... Yep. Stopping it, and it's almost like kind of sweet in a messed up way. Yeah. Like, I want to be your father, so I'm going to show you, like, I'm going to do everything to destroy this other man. You really want to be your father because I love you, my daughter. Yeah. And it's in a, in a messed up way, it is almost sort of sweet. And he does, you know, provide so that heaven can, there's the factory yeah. for, you know, that's going to provide work. Again, it's all well, from heaven, selfish reasons, but it has some good consequences. But heaven really became. A different woman because of that situation she became strong yeah you know she she was one of, like kathy always was very fierce and strong and you know she's gonna speak her mind heather was very nice and sweet and quiet and shy and then she turned into this woman who was kind of like you know helping logan run you know right. tatterton toys you know running this big empire and stuff like that so again i don't think heaven came out badly right yeah with and the abuses that she suffered and then moving on to the colors, we've got, I guess, Ormond and Sally Jean Longchamp. And then we have uh, Laura Sue and Randolph Jr. Ormond was kind of, you know, he was an alcoholic. He was struggling all the time. But even I remember when Dawn first got there, and just for everybody to remember, it's been a while since Dawn, Danielle has read the Dawn series, so this might be a little quicker, this portion. But I remember she went into this bar to get her father... Who, this man she thought was her father at the time. 
and he he got up and he went with her. He knew it was the right thing to do, and he he knew that like he had done this thing to Dawn for what he thought was the best. You know, this yeah. was a girl who was not going to be loved by her family, so his wife was suffering, having just lost a daughter, so he decided to go with this sort of scheme. Okay. Sally Jean was a good mother. She struggled a lot, too. Yeah. I think she felt a lot of guilt, but then you have Laura, Sue, and Randolph, yeah. Who uh, you know Randolph is sort of this trope of this of all the the later yeah. Lee Andrews novels of fathers that want to love their daughters but have too much emotional baggage and kind of yeah. become like weak. And Laura Sue was sort of helpless, intentionally so. Mm -hmm. She could have gotten out of bed any time, but instead she let grandmother Cutler yeah. run everything. Then as soon as she died, she was like, "Oh, I'm better. Everything's good. I'm not running anything though. I'm going off to the party and live my life. You'll be fine, dog. Come on, life's short. Well, Have think, fun." And I think Cutler was where we saw that change because, like, Tony, Luke, Christopher, or even Paul Sheffield. You know, those were all strong father figures. Right. I feel like. And then you kind of get this flip. True. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of changes the second half. So I'll let it's you continue true. with color. But no, that's, that's kind of yeah. where we see that change. Yeah. Well, and I do want to jump back to Dollinger. Paul and Henny, I think, were probably yeah. the best of the parents to the yeah. Dollinger kids. Well, no, wait. Maybe not. <laughs> You're right. I, I really just said that. We, Paul. Paul is hitting on <laughs> Oops, Kathy. right, right. Henny, Henny was terrific. Henny was uh, great, yes. Yeah, no, Paul was the worst, she too, in his own way. She, she did, but it was inappropriate and awful. Uh, yeah, I kind of can't believe that. I was Kathy. like, oh, he was the best. Uh, Kathy had it rough. She, yeah. she had got Christopher hitting on her in one room. She got Paul hitting on her in the other room. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Uh, but so, yeah, <laughs> Laura Sue, though, was pretty awful. I mean, she's definitely not trying to poison her kids or anything, yeah. but she was willing to let her, her daughter be uh, kidnapped so you know yeah. part of the scheme just to just to not have to deal with anything yeah. like well that's fine then again cowardly yes yeah, not not maliciously so but not you know a parent that's going to well, save her she daughter had too much choice with Lillian either exactly so exactly she, but she could you know that was dawn's biggest point to always to laura sue was you could have you were yeah. my mother it doesn't matter yeah. what what you're going through you were my mother you could have put your foot down with this yeah. whole thing uh, and then we have... Um, well, money makes the world go round. Uh, well, that was, you know, that's definitely yeah, a theme, that's the theme of these novels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then, oh, we, we shouldn't forget Damien and Lucietta yeah. from My Sweet Audrina. Uh, yeah, they're pretty messed up, too. I think, like, they definitely, that, that novel, one of the major themes is, like, suffocating love. Like, you're suffocating people with your love. You have Damien, who tortures Audrina every night. Not, you know, she was tortured mentally and obviously she was raped but he keeps putting her in this situation over and over again because he thinks he knows best he's going to be the savior and then you have lucietta who like after audrina's rape psychologically damaged her daughter maybe further by like shoving her in this tub scrubbing you know trying to get the clean up in implying that it was never going to be clean yeah. from your your brain and but they yeah. made her think that she was not herself. Right, yeah. And they basically tried to like tell her she was the second Audrina. I think that's awful. Messed up. And basically Messed up. made her repress these, you know, this rape situation. I mean, psychologically so damaging that poor girl and how yeah. she got out of that and moved on well, with her Damien's life. Well, even like, well, I still let you have some memories like meeting Arden at this age and you're so great, Damien. You're, you're just the best, school. right? I mean, you're the girl just, just the wanted best. to go to school. Yeah. And obviously how, you know, technically Damien and Elspeth were parents to Vera, yeah, yeah. and how he treated Vera was awful. You have you lavish all this love on one girl, and oh, you deprive this other girl of your love. Again, Vera was messed up too, jealousy, all that stuff. But you know what, Damien and Lucietta did, lucky if you will. She, not good, no. not good. You know, um, that and, was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible on the scale. And also how Damien was to Sylvia. Yeah. You know, he pretty much was like, man, eh, you took away my wife. Eh, you have all these problems. Audrina, here's something else to add on your plate. You can't handle right. your own life, but I need you to take care of your little sister, too. So the Laundry series, mm -hmm. we have Daphne and Pierre. Yeah. Technically, I guess, well, we would have had Gabrielle and Pierre, too. Yeah. And obviously, life would have been very different. There would yeah. be a story. But Daphne and Pierre, again, Pierre continues on that theme from the Cutler series yep. of the the sort of weak father. He genuinely loves his daughter. Such high hopes for him. Right, because it's really like the do. one outlet that's going to be okay for mm -hmm. Ruby. And instead, you know, obviously Daphne runs the house. She 
puts Ruby down all the time. She's constantly torturing this girl who just... When it's really Giselle. Right, right. How do you not know your daughter, because though, they, that you raised, is like that's that? That's why, because then she would have to be like, oh, I, uh, yeah, yep. can't take accountability. Which seems to be the theme of most of these stories, right. is not being able to take any sort of accountability, so... I think Pierre did somewhat, but, yeah. but not Daphne. He tried. He did. He tried, he just never came back from it. And again, I think that there's supposed to be, it's yeah. one of the few ghost-written novels that sort of has this loose end of... I think that there's almost like this implication that Daphne and the guy she was with, I can't think of his name right now, who ended up, like, she ended up being with him afterwards. Yeah, the lawyer guy. Yeah, and I yeah. think that there's supposed to be a hint that maybe they had something to do with Pierre's death. It mm -hmm. may not have been, you know, the girls weren't around. One of those things that was, like, hinted at that, you know, maybe they had something to do with it and the girls weren't there anymore, so they couldn't keep an eye on him anyway. And then, you know, going, I remember, in, again, the, uh, the least amount that I remember now are probably the Hudson series and... Logan series, but I remember Melody's mother was pretty terrible. I think her name was, I want to say Haley, Haley. Uh, but you know, Somebody again, a lot, a lot of Melody I felt like was sort of a mix of Flowers in the Attic and then like some of the later ghost written novels because it starts off, you know. Christopher is her father that's like the best, greatest, mm -hmm. this mother who's clearly selfish and ends up leaving her daughter with relative strangers that she doesn't know in order to go become an actress. And it's just kind of like messed up as usual. But again, I don't really, I never really, I don't remember it too much that I could be like, oh, this happened. But overall, who would you say then are the the worst of the parents? Pretty for me, obvious. Obviously, um, Corinne was really awful. I think Tony was really awful. Laura, Sue, and Randolph, I feel like were hit or miss. Uh, I think that Oct um, Damien and Lucky, they were awful and they made a lot of mistakes. But they ne they always loved Audrina. Yeah. That was never in doubt. But what do you think? I think I'm gonna have to go with Corinne again. Yeah. Fox Force series was yeah. pretty awful. Her win was she really tried to awful. Tried to kill her kids. Yeah, I her mean, money. and and made them feel less than. Yep. And what she did to Carrie was one of the most despicable yeah. Corin moments of all the despicable Corin moments. Then tries to like warp, you know. Again, John John Amos had a lot to do with what happened in If There Be Thorns. But if Corin hadn't put Bart in that situation, Bart Junior, it kind of warped his mind too. So. Yeah, I think Corinne was maybe of the worst. Luke was pretty yeah, bad, too, they, though, you know? They abandoned their kids and left them yeah. to fend for themselves, and they starved. And they starved. I mean, he tried to kind of make it up, but it was always, like, selfish. Like, oh, well, I'm providing you with this this yeah. family now, but I'm going to get some like, money yeah. out of it, Corinne right? tried to kill her kids. Luke, who abandoned his kids and almost let them starve to death. Tony, who raped his kid. Yeah, uh -huh. and then raped, tried to rape his real kid, his stepdaughter, <laughs> daughter, and then granddaughter. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And the, yeah, they're all horrible. Yeah, so we got um, some horrible ones there. Who did you think was the worst? Corin, I think oh, really? Corin, and then yeah, um, on the same page on that one. Oh, definitely Corin. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, again, I think that they all—it's so apples and oranges. We're gonna—we're yep. coming to discover. It depends on what you think is the worst. But what—what what do you think? And thanks for watching another episode of Four One Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. But who do you think are the worst parents? from BC Andrews. We Again, want to hear from you. We do. And please subscribe. Please comment below. Uh, feel free to mention some of the later, later or more recent novels. We haven't really read too much of them. I think I stopped around The Orphans. Yeah. Or The Runaways. Wildflowers. Yeah. Some, oh, Wildflowers. Yeah. yeah. Something, something around there. But we're doing the uh, the main original novels. Yeah. And so what do you think? Uh, don't miss the other episode about who were the worst grandparents. Don't miss the episode about who's the worst siblings. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. There's supposed to be a hint that maybe they had something to do with Pierre's death. It mm -hmm. may not have been, you know, the girls weren't around to sort of keep eye on any. You're just having a drink while I'm in the middle of talking. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought I was like at a meeting call for a minute. It's like a Thursday. I don't know where sorry. we're at. <laughs> That's what I do during meetings. I was just. John Amos.